talk about all the time, you know, effort and toughness. And, you know, it's really what this program is based on. You give effort and you're tough mentally, physically. Your knowledge is going to grow. And that's what this place is built on. Understanding that you got to come in every day with, uh, you know, that lunch pal mentality. And, uh, you know, you got to come to work. And that's what I was raised on. And that's what this, uh, you know, program is built on. So it's a perfect place for me. Probably when I was, you know, four years old, three years old, whatever it was, my dad was coaching football at the high school at the time. And, uh, you know, I was the kid in the weight room, hanging off stuff, you know, running around with the bags, getting yelled at by my dad and the other coaches. Um, you know, being that annoying kid that, you know, everyone kind of has. And, uh, you know, just having fun with it. You know, I enjoyed football from a young age and actually baseball and basketball as well. But, you know, my dad kept me busy with everything. Being a point guard, you know, being a receiver, running back, playing shortstop, outfield, whatever it was, um, I think just the athletic standpoint, you know, really, you know, up my game and maybe more than just a linebacker, maybe more of a little bit of an athlete. You know, that's why I encourage people to play three sports in high school, you know, because you never know what's going to happen to your body. I thought I was going to be a basketball player, but, uh, you know, when you stop growing in eighth, ninth grade at 6'1, uh, you know, basketball's not going to work out for me. So, uh, you know, I played baseball, I was pretty good at baseball. And, uh, you know, my dad always pushed football at a certain age, when it, whether it was ninth or 10th grade, I really knew it was a sport that it was made for me. And, uh, you know, I thought I was an offensive player too in high school, but that didn't work out either. So I ended up moving over to linebacker and uh, now I'm here with it. And, you know, I enjoyed every second of it. A lot of people don't know, but we actually uh, went to high school together for the, um, he was at our high school his freshman year. So, and he was a great player, and then we, he was the up and coming guy. Joe's always been a great football player and a great leader and a great person. When I committed to Michigan State, I had about four other offers. They were all Mac schools. Um, me and my dad thought highly of Mac schools. Came down for a spring game. Saw him on a visit one time. He told me uh, if they were going to offer, he's going to commit on the spot. Coach Antonio gave me that scholarship. I committed on the spot, told my dad then afterwards, and you know, he loved every second of it. Uh, Coach Bowman was a great recruiter. You know, I felt like they really wanted me up here. So, and uh, there's such a family, you know, family atmosphere up here, and it made it special. My mom, you know, loved it up here when she came here for the first time, so did my dad. Joe Bocci is an outstanding competitor. He's a, he's a great athlete. You know, he played multiple sports in high school and, and was all conference in multiple sports at skillful positions. He was their tailback, punt returner, shortstop, point guard. Uh, so he played a lot of different positions. Uh, since coming to Michigan State, he's, uh, he's established himself as, I think, as a leader. Who's gonna make that play? Let's go. Someone's gotta make that play. The first time I met Joe, you could just tell he's a natural born leader, you know. He's one of those guys that's gonna come in each and every day and uh, give you everything he's got, whether he's in the weight room, whether he's in the film room, you know. You could tell even as a freshman, as a young guy, he was a leader. He was someone that people looked up to right away. He was someone that was gonna put the time in, put the effort in, you know. He personally, for me, you know, he drives me to be great. He doesn't let me slack. He's always been my lifting partner. He always makes sure I'm getting in to watch film. So having someone like that to hold me accountable and make sure I'm doing the right things has always been big for me. I can't pick our leaders. Our players pick our leaders. And so you have to earn that leadership. And he, he was able to do that really as a true sophomore almost. He was very well respected as a true sophomore. Had an outstanding um, season as a sophomore, so he's got a great foundation of which to draw on in terms of uh, you know, knowledge and performance uh, for this season. He's a guy that everyone looks up to. When he speaks, everyone listens, you know. Whether, it doesn't matter who he's speaking to, the offense, the defense, the team as a whole. When Joe Bocci speaks, everyone's listening and everyone's tuned in. And, you know, that's just because of the way he works around here and the stuff that he does, that, the position that he's put himself in over the years through his hard work, through his play on the field, and you just know, you know, the way he treats guys, he's got a lot of respect in the locker room. Who else, Joe Bocci? He's a great person, he's a great student great student of the game. There's a lot of uh, intangibles that really have made our linebackers here, whether it's been Greg Jones, whether it's been Max Bulla, whether it's been Riley Bulla or Joe Bocci. Our Mike linebackers have been outstanding players here, and that would include Caleb Thornhill in 2007 too. They've been outstanding players here and, and uh, inspirational leaders. 
it's all love of the game, I'd say, but you know, you make that, you know, that turnover that gets momentum going. And I feel like that one against Michigan last year, that strip that I had, you know, kind of flipped the momentum to us for a little bit of that game. And when you get a play like that, that game-changing play, um, you know, that's something you, you look back on and said, man, that, that was something that, uh, you know, I want to do again. I want to do that again. And I always try and do that every week. That's one of my goals every week, you know, get a turnover, get a touchdown. And, uh, you know, I came short of that touchdown one yet, and uh, hopefully it comes soon. I mean, I've seen him make a lot of amazing plays. He's just a baller, someone that always finds his way to the ball, and he's, just, he's going to make, the, make a big play no matter what. That's just what he does. The one versus Utah State was pretty incredible where he jumped up, hit the ball to himself, and won the game on an interception. That was one of the craziest plays I've ever seen. Just jumped up over the running back and knocked the ball down. The one that got me was uh, the one he did uh, against Utah State when he tipped it and then caught it himself. I forget who I was standing next to. I'm like, this, this dude is cold. This dude is good. I knew it was going to be a quick pass. So, you know, just from film and just, you know, what they were doing that game, it was going to be a quick pass. It was going to come out early. And uh, a lot of times in those situations, the running back will cut you when they're blocking you. So, uh, you know, when that happened, you know, I just thought to jump right away and try and get my hands up. And the running back ended up not cutting me, so I kind of used him as a, you know, a little boost to get a little higher. And you know, I stuck my hand up, matched hands like Coach Bola says all the time, and uh, just tried to find the ball. I felt like that ball was in the air for a minute. Joe makes great players, big time players, great leader. Um, we're lucky to have him.